Hi, viewer. It's just you and me now. I don't know if this is recording, but um, I just wanted to say to you, uh, yeah, I do have a horrible mark on my face. I scratched it up. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, Austin's coming back. And that's when I said to Austin, no, I never want to work with you again. And it was great. It's magical. So it's, it's a classic anecdote. I was telling the audience that it's fine. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's exciting. Who, who, uh, I heard you say a name. Who were you addressing? I said Austin. Oh, good. It was a joke. I was doing a bit, basically. I was doing a bit. I and, love it. Uh, well, I, I think the, um, the show suffers when it's just us two. I think it's, no, uh, no. I think I think we're about to turn a corner, and it's about to this become is the high mark that has ever been achieved. Um, Why don't so you just tell a story uninterrupted? How about that? <laughs> just tell, just tell. I feel like half the comments on the videos are Austin's trying to tell a story. Tell us a story. Just like five minutes. Just I'm just going to sit back. I've had a long week. I'm going to drink my Pepsi. Mm. Uh, come, get some ah, comfy. No. Tell me, tell me an anecdote about something, anything. Uh, well, I we were postulating. Uh, I don't. I don't have an anecdote. I have an open. I'm sorry. Have you been question. to a doctor about that? Is that? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've I've been told. I, although I love hilariously that you jumped right in. Um, yeah. No. The, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that's on brand. It's fine. That's cool. I know my role here. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and hey, now Troy. Troy joining us. Here we're already. We we're already rolling. Oh, I saw that red light. All right. This good. is gold. I was coming on immediately with a here we are face to face, a couple of silver spoons, hoping to find we're two of a kind, ready to go, ready to show together. You guys are too young. Yeah, no, it's a... <laughs> really. That's actually driving me crazy because yeah. I know. Well, I, is that I is that I've like a Sesame it. Street thing? Is that like a Sesame that? Street thing? I don't what? know. You Americans, you have your pop culture, don't you? What what, what is it? Silver spoons. A couple of silver spoons. I literally the titular line in the song is. <laughs> it's a song. It's a, it's a theme, theme a, song uh, sitcom, to yeah. to a seminal '80s. I guess you could call it a sitcom. Starring Ricky Schroeder, who would readily correct you and say, it's Rick. Um, I'll never forget, for people who remember Ricky Schroeder, I love just barreling down, having no idea what conversation I'm walking into right now, other than the fact that I know you had a haircut. You've you've not Um, interrupted anything of value. You guys were talking about Hitler before, and I'm like, let me talk to you about Ricky Schroeder for a second. Mm. So Ricky Schroeder was, was like teen heartthrob, teen bop, you know, he was just, speaking of Hitler, blonde hair, blue eyed, (laughs) just... Just tick the boxes of all of, you know, what we loved about America. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, this is quite the, uh, this is quite the this arsenal is of apart. adjectives. Is amazing, yeah. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I, I can commit to this. Am I, am I, am I following that Hitler was everything we love about America? No, 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 yeah, no, no, Yeah, no, he de- just, that was definitely a pro-Aryan stance from Troy there, there on the There show. was, there, look, there was yeah, a time cool. where, where it was like, hey, look, America equals, you know, apple pie, baseball, and, and for whatever reason, this, this is reflective in the casting. There's a lot of people that cast people who were blonde hair and blue eyed. Because mm. dark hair, for some reason, skewed either European or skewed something else. And so it's like, for whatever reason, America represented this hair color and this eye color. It's stupid. Uh, anyway, so guy, the kid finds out um, this guy is like, he's a wealthy billionaire man child who has uh, uh, a son and he never met him. And all of a sudden he's like, hey, I guess I'm your kid. Uh, he's like, oh, okay. Well, I've got a train in my house and I also have video games uh, if you want to come live here and we'll make a TV show about it. And so they did. Different and times. then Aaron Gray was on it. She played like the, I don't know if it was like, she was the person who was like making sure that he wasn't beating Ricky Schroeder. You know what I like about this story was that it had this really long runway and then it was the equivalent of like a Harrier jump jet that then just, just it like, it wasn't this long acceleration. It was like, then there's this and this and this, and then they made the show. Yeah. Was was that the, well, I like was the, I don't was the know. Hitler jump? Was that the one that the <laughs> that was a framing device that I think works? What I love about this story is I don't know. I don't recognize any of the names you're saying. I don't Ricky have any Schroeder? cultural context. It is entirely possible. Wait, this, this wait, wait, just wait, wait, wait. A bit where you've made up a show that never you know Aaron Gray. Did you never watch? Did you never Gray? watch Buck Buck Rogers? Wasn't Buck Rogers like like in the fifties? No, Buck Rogers was in the uh, oh, late seventies, early eighties. Gil you mean Gerard, the, the Queen, the Queen scored movie version thing. No, no, 
That was Slash Gordon, wasn't it? I'm, that was I've, Slash I've, Gordon. I've, yeah, I've, I've gone. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm this is what young, happens so. when Alana's like you rarely uh, you rarely I mean I don't get to be the young guy on the show very often so I'm gonna I was just it. gonna say that's you're rarely yeah. you're rarely like who is the youngest as the clueless millennial uh, in this lineup um, of us three it's probably I'm. it's me it's now I'm 35 the How youngest Alana's Alana's the youngest oh I'm sorry Alana obviously when Alana's here but uh, yeah, Mike so you it's... and I I'm, I'm 36 you and I are very close in age hmm Mm. And um, I made you're much wiser though you've you've made good use of that extra year i think you've you've uh, <laughs> it was all in that extra you got the year. value of it yeah yeah, from, exactly. yeah from 1984 to 85 i was like i gotta get a running start on mm -hmm. uh, mr bithel so mm -hmm. it, I, i'm glad to know it paid off how did you know about mike in 1984 the same way that i knew to do anything there was a star and uh there were three wise men three guys showed up and was like hey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three guys showed up and they were like, you've got one year, make it count. Yeah. Um, it was more of a message to my parents, but... Uh, guys, guys, who's the asshole that brought myrrh? Uh, I was me, that was the only thing they had in the <laughs> gift shop. We told you, you, gold, frankincense, silver. These are three things that you bring to a baby's birthday. It's like, you brought myrrh? So I could... Yeah, I but but it. that did, maybe that's what set me on my path towards music, is the, is the goal of, you know... Is, Going is the three murder. fictional characters that I just gaffed? Um, no, the the uh, uh, you know the anticipation I, of my birth. Well, that too. <laughs> um, there were no angels singing on that day. I don't think it was. It was just sorry. some guy walking around. Goes, some bloke got got squeezed out just a minute ago. Might want to go say hi to him. He's going. What's he eating? He's going to do food off the floor. Fish and chips. <laughs> fish and chips. Yeah, it's fish and chips. Yeah, it's of course. Chips. I guess I got fish and chips. He wrapped him up in the yeah. news. And this is this is from the Daily Mail. That's where I got it from. Anyway, <laughs> something about the Mike. rhythm of the chewing. I don't. Felt I, very I would never want a Daily Mail reader to know that I've been born. Uh, that yeah. doesn't sound good. I'd rather Guardian. Daily Mail can. God. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like yeah. that's fine. Telegraph. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you. Know you. What? I don't have about an opinion Daily on the Telegraph. Though. I can't even pretend to have an opinion on the Telegraph. I, I genuinely don't even know what they. I don't think I've ever read the Telegraph. I don't know. What it's kind is. of like it, it's. It would be it. the outliers, like USA Today. It's kind of like okay, but like you're not New York Times, you're not New York Post. You're mm. not like making these polarizing comments. This is the weirdest episode we've ever done. Let Jesus me. Well, let I didn't me, realize let it. Me down the you, rabbit hole. Let me ask you, Mike, on the subject of British. Uh, uh, yes. news because I'll take this mic obviously <laughs> obviously the Daily Mail has this very so we, shall we say fraught reputation um, sure. but is it because it, it I, I can never I, I've never taken the time to kind of do due diligence on this because sometimes it mm. looks like it's basically just transparently tabloid like mm -hmm. no different than National Enquirer but then yeah. there are other times where I'll see what what appear to be very viable articles, like very like they, they look like an earnest shot at news. And if you if you came in with no baggage, you would see it no differently than any other headline. So what what am I? So we so the key the, the easiest one of the easiest way I've ever been able to explain to to Americans is essentially flip like cable news and newspapers in your brain, like culture. Sorry, I didn't mean to flip you both off there. Um, it's like. Jog on. Our newspapers have a lot of kind of are they're more centrist more generally. That's something. That, sorry, our, our news channels. Sorry, are, are more centrist kind of middle middle of the road. You know, both sides kind of arguments. Right. Um, that's actually shifting. There is an attempt to kind of start the British Fox News at the moment happening, but like generally, our our politics is are more the more um, uh, the stronger ends of the spectrum are represented in in newspapers, and you have yeah, you have your it's tabloid, known, tabloids, your broadsheets. Daily Mail is an thing. interesting case. Because what happened with the Daily Mail was it was always definitely right-leaning. Um, well, sorry, extremely like on the right of, of British politics. What's interesting is it's one of the few British papers, or I guess any paper internationally, that did incredibly well on the internet and kind of got like like became just this massive international online brand. That's the I only reason. That's that what I know you're about experiencing it. is you're seeing like a right-wing paper that is. Oh, you, know, you guys had a Twitter. Should we take right wing. our? Let's take our articles to Twitter. Should we do? I'll, I'll get it right on it. You're watching. You're watching. Like, what if like a right wing newspaper like went full tilt like online tabloid, and that's that that the 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 kind of the discrepancy you're talking about is those two sides of the same company. I know it's it's hands. It's hands. It's directing. I'm directing the conversation. It's like that. Pew, that's pew, him pew, conducting. Yeah. <laughs> that's the Mandalorian. Pew 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 pew. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's so it's that. You're seeing that's what you're that 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 dichotomy you're seeing there is kind of what the impression I get. <laughs> the impression but is there I get anybody, from like 
Is there anybody uh, outside, like, is there anybody that would, I I guess what I'm trying to suss out is if they have any redeeming sort of journalistic uh, quality, because I, I will see things every now and again, just on Facebook or whatever, ambiently, someone will share something and it will look like a totally normal piece of news. And then only will I, when I realize where it's coming from, Will I, re- well, I think, hmm, like I wouldn't have known. And that's why it's curious because I, that's why. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are journalists there who, I'm sure there are journalists there who kind of follow a news story where it takes them, etc. I, I don't agree a, with them politically on anything. But, 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 but like, that's I'm, the thing. I'm sure there's a, there's a, in the same way as there's like, it looks like from the outside, you're making me so self conscious. Right? I, I, I keep love my hands you. Now. No, it's like, um, but like, I, 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 my, some, my, what I can see from what I see of clips of like Fox News is you have like the opinion stuff, which goes wildly off piste. And then it seems like there are like right wing news hosts who are still, again, like, yeah, that was Shepard Smith's stuff role that back like nonsense, in the day. but like, they have like it's what is it this the truthiness the Stephen Colbert thing of like it feels yeah. a bit like it's you know it's truth it, adjacent it, it has the veneer of real news kind of thing I think I, that's the same. This though, is basically. why I asked because tabloid. But I'm definitely by the way I'm definitely like a very biased source of information about all this because I'm super lefty as you both know. So no, well I, that's I, I think why it's all trash anyway. I, that well that's why I was curious because um, like there's a distinct difference between what you, like Fox is a good is a good comparison from the standpoint that that. What makes them their money are the people that are unabashedly not, they're not even pretending to say this is what, uh, this is our stab at objectivity. It's people saying, this is very much my view. That's your, that's your Tucker Carlson's, your Sean Hannity's, et cetera. And then their during the day lineup is this, we, we purport to be, uh, you know, more but still theoretically, choosing the stories, still with the angle and the uh, lean uh, towards uh, the right. Yeah, issue. undoubtedly. But they, but they do claim some, some semblance of journalism with their actual journalists and whereas like right. tabloid to me is like TMZ. It's just, it's not even, it's not even in the same universe that we're talk- talking about. Cause when I saw the daily mail, it, it looked a lot closer to TMZ. It when that's what, that's what formed my opinion, which is why I was like, am, is it, is it this, is it a chimera of t- like national the inquirer alien landing? Press. And yeah, new, okay, that that is the my British tabloid press for. does that, like, and because I think there was definitely the thing historically in the UK where if you 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 know you have your newspaper subscription and 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 you know those those tabloids kind of use the sensationalist kind of stuff as like it was like the it's like having the, the funny pages in the paper like yeah. it was like yes you'd have your you'd have your more kind of like quote Bigfoot unquote spotting. real journalism like, and then you'd have like your yeah it's 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 all leaning in the same direction it's all giving you the same message but there's definitely like the you know the, the 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 fun stuff, which is a bit more extreme. It sounds it sounds similar to the way Fox is packaged. Yeah, yeah. Well, except that on Fox, you don't see the like photos revealed of Loch Ness monster in lost camper bag of you know like. There's on less National of that on the Empire. mail. Like I think there's less of that. There's definitely less of that in like the paper. I think like I think that's more of the online side. That's right, they're definitely they're good at getting the clicks. Like that's always that's definitely like the thing that stands out. Like if you look at like which British papers have like an international thing, it really is basically the Mail and the Guardian. Right. And I think the Guardian's image internationally is is much more kind of. Like New York a new, Times, like, Wall Street Journal. Yeah, they're 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 seen as yeah they're seen as like a, 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 a establishment left leaning, quote unquote, real good German journalism kind of thing. Yeah, so it's a different different two different paths. I'm sure the Daily Mail are making more money with the uh, tabloidy bullshits and the things. You know, that's the thing that's always astonishing is like the the ratings comparisons between MSNBC and Fox are are so lopsided it's insane it, it, like which way does it lean like oh fox, fox fox crushes oh like and and I think, msnbc is that's your like that's your left of center american news they're the station, counter they're, yeah they're the they're the antidote to fox news or the 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 you know the 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 offset i, I guess you could think of it but they're from the their outside, audience is a it, fraction of the size i mean definitely american politics skews to the right like anyway just generally but it does seem MSNBC isn't as far left as Fox is far right, right? Like it's, and I'm not using far right to its extreme, but like it seems, it does seem like it's MSNBC is closer to the center and to the reality than Fox is. It that's seems, probably true. It might be mm. splitting hairs a little bit, but I think that's probably true. Um, uh, yeah. But like I said, I'm, I'm from the outside, like, and uh, like, you know, 
in it, the thing that I always have to point out to like American friends is like Obama would have been a Tory in this country, like from his policies. Like Obama would be on the right of British politics. Like certainly Biden, uh, to, uh, at least yeah. Biden uh, up up till the point of like in the primaries. You know, he he's actually been he's actually been more left than you mm -hmm. would have guessed from the outside prior to his election in terms of the actual policies he's pursuing. But he, yeah, Biden was always very much a center left type that that mm -hmm. by British comparison would be yeah and right, here he'd be right kind side. of center to maybe even slightly right yeah uh, just exactly. because again that Overton window is different in every country in the world right like that's that's the fascinating aspect of it yeah absolutely and the fact that also the thing that always drives me crazy is the the kind of arbitrariness with which terms like liberal uh, are are thrown around and they mean they mean wildly different, different things, things in, in different countries yeah. yeah all right next question uh Troy. Are these all going to be for me? That seems... Oh, good. Okay, cool. I was, I was no, well, say. it's this is this is inspired by you right up. before you arrived. It's very organized, this. I like it. It's good. <laughs> Turns out Alana was the source of chaos all Alana's along. Alana's been messing this whole <laughs> thing up all this time. This is this is now a professional podcast. Uh, yeah, maybe when good. she shows up, I just won't let her in. Um, but uh, <laughs> so, question. As our as the resident expert on parenthood, total, total left turn here. Hmm. Um, we were talking about when young infants, yes, Mike Mike is showing off his war wound, which you, buddy. apparently Carrie has educated him is mainly an infant thing because- I scratched my face in the night and I've been told that that's a thing babies do. Is that right? Yeah. But, I mean, I, I can go off on that, but okay. Well, here no, was my you, question. You're on the right show. Let's go off on that. Let's explore. Don't, don't, don't prevent them from doing that. Keep okay, that, that was that. Okay, interesting. That was going to yeah. be kind of where I go with it because I remember the first time that I ever knew that was a phenomenon was I met a friend who had a young, like one year old or six month old, that had little cotton balls on their fingertips, and I was like, "What weird gecko am I looking at?" I mean, it was the most because I couldn't tell what I was looking at as I walked up to him, and he said, "Dude, my kid is like Wolverine, and he basically gouges his eyes out at night," and I so, never knew that was a thing. So he now, doesn't gouge his eyes out. There's no well, that way. You're, was, you're, you're, that was the thing. My question straight straight to evolutionary biology of, well, wait a minute, though. We like, would be blind. Yeah. We, or we would never have developed eyes or something. You know, we would have we would have the regressed <laughs> into photo For any photo parents that are listening, bodies. There, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, future. Man, there's something in the water right now. There's a lot of quarantine babies, a lot of covid babies that are popping out right now or will be very soon. Uh, and I have, a, I have virtually no unsolicited opinions. I have some notions and some things that I would, I would call encouragement, but I have no opinion or I, I have a lot of opinion, but I have, I have no, uh, uh advice to Proclamations. give. Proclamations. Yeah. Everybody is there to, it's your, I don't know. I don't, you don't know your baby. How can I tell you how to raise your baby? You have no idea. Uh, and I don't believe that there's a pat way that you should just, this is how you raise a child. I do believe that there are some, uh, great bumper rails that you can put in place. But one of the best pieces of, best notion that someone floated to me that has served me well was that if it has a barcode, it's for the parent, not the baby. And that's fair. If it has a barcode, it's for your benefit, not for the baby's. So, because pretty much, especially for the first, they call it the fourth trimester. So gestation period is nine months. The three months that follow when the baby is born, I, I'll never forget this. Uh, uh, Traveler, when he first came out, um, was there were, there were a couple things that were concerning and we brought in our one pediatrician. He didn't register any flags, but he was an asshole. We fired him. We brought in his current pediatrician um, who was amazing. And after looking at him he while he was holding him, um, we were like, well, we were concerned about this. We were concerned about this. And this is happening. He goes, guys, give him a second. He just went through like, it's the most traumatic thing that we will ever go through. He's basically in exile right now from his home. Yeah. The most, the most traumatic thing. And I, I love this as a comparison. The most traumatic thing that you've ever experienced, ever, ever, the most violent traumatic thing you've ever experienced, you experienced as a child when you were the most vulnerable the most susceptible to disease or anything, and you made it, you made it through. So that's encouragement. You can get through traffic. You can get through losing your job. You can get through that breakup. You can get through anything because you did that. Hardest thing, job done. Um, so I, I, I firmly believe like, well, I've got a Nanit, which is a, a great baby monitor device. That 
has a barcode on it. That is 100% for us. It doesn't help travelers sleep any better, but it helps me feel better. Um, but the, the, the whole thing about babies are able to move when they're in the womb. That's what the kicks come from and they're swimming and they're flipping, doing everything else. The whole thing of get them out and bind them. There's studies that have shown that people have, that, that leads to adult things that they have to unpack later. Um, so the whole thing about scratching your eyes, you, you're, de you're determining object permanence and, and situational awareness have. because of that. <laughs> it's like, I, st yeah, I, the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was moving something and I, I, I hit traveler in the head and he just looked at me. I was like, dude, um, uh, let me walk you through a traveler always wants to know what happened. It's like, can I tell you what happened when he falls down? Can I tell you what happened? Yeah. So you you were running really fast this way, and there's the 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 curb is uneven, and so you you stepped on that and you fell and you hit yourself right here. Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. How does it feel now? So we talk him through everything. So the 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 whole notion of well, I want to I want to it hurts a, a parent to see their child inflict pain. Anytime you see blood on your child, uh, it it there is something literally instinctual that happens within me. So I understand the parent of going. I have to keep his hands. Or, or her hands covered, or else they will hurt themselves. Yeah. Do you know how long it takes for a baby to heal? Holy shit, they're like Wolverine. It's insane. I guess they're Wolverine on both aspects of that, then. There's like the death well, yeah, claws, cool about and then the healing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the other thing is, like, keep them trimmed. We, but we've, we've cut Traveler's Nails since he was, you know, a couple months old. So let me ask and you. He, he cuts or whatever, and it's like, oh, yeah, he got a good cut right there. He's not going to cut his eye out. The one, what islands are for. the one, uh, when you, I, I like this idea. Uh, well, I don't know if I, I like it. I, right I'm, now. I'm curious uh, to unpack this idea of if it has a barcode, it's for mm. the parent. That's an interesting <laughs> delineation. Um, where is does that so mean? agent 47? No, <laughs> no, he's just for the parents. Not for the baby. He's, he's just, just for, for the parents. parents. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Maybe come for the baby <laughs> or maybe come for the parents. <laughs> I saw it as the opposite. He's there to he's he's, he's there to he's uh, there to take out the parents. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, is does that mean that there is a contingent of parents that I've never known about that that like because diapers would be a very obvious that's a barcoded item. Yeah, uh, that obviously. The so then, what what would a what is the literal without devolving into something horrible? <laughs> What is the, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is there like a, a, a sort of, you, you know, hyper, yeah, like I was going to say, what is the solution to, is there like a paleo parenting, uh, you know, subgroup there that I don't know be, about? Right. There must yeah, be I like, mean, a, like dude, a natural only. Like full yeah, on yeah. to the extreme, like no electricity. There, 100%. And there's books written about them, which have a barcode, which is for the parent. <laughs> Um, there Actually, are that would be that the thing. Like, Word of mouth only should be the way yeah. that those yeah. that community. It's written is. on a leaf. It's written on there, a leaf. No, it's, no written language. People, not even I, written no, word. Language. You're right. You're yeah. right, right. Um, there, there's some people that go hard. They go den, you know, and they're like, "I'm, I'm mama bear, and the, these are my cubs." Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of studies that show, you know, nowhere else in nature does an animal put their child, you know, 50 feet away from them, and then they go sleep in a separate cave. They always sleep together until finally that that animal goes, I'm out, and they leave. And I was avidly against. I was like, day one, that kid's in a crib. Are you kidding me? I want my bed back. I had this bitch next to me for the last nine months complaining and I'm taking over pillows. It was great, man. Pam, I didn't see her for the last like trimester because she just had this wall of pillows. I was like, I'm assuming you're there and haven't rolled over. Good night. Um, and I was excited to get my bed back and we started talking about traveler coming to sleep with us. I was like, no, it's like, why? And I asked my pediatrician, this is like, why, why are you opposed to that? I was like, uh, because I move when I sleep. He's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that. How often do you fall out of bed? And I went, right, yeah. what? Because how often do you fall out of bed? I was like, I never fall out of bed. He goes, isn't that amazing when you're asleep, you still can judge the edge of the bed. And I, I may have shared this story before. I was asleep. Yeah, everyone's nodding. I almost moved my hand. Pam caught my hand over Traveler's face. Dead asleep, never woke up. There is some crazy ass shit that happens when a woman becomes a mom. It's just insane. There's some things that have happened to me too. There's just instinctual things that start coming alive that were systems that were not online. 
But the the notion of, you know, sleep with this. And the Traveler, when he was like nine months old, was like, I'm out. I don't want to sleep in here anymore. And he got his own room, slept at night, never had a problem. It's great. So I, I think that there's some times where you're just like, and I, I really feel like the way that we were raised as kids, we're now seeing the effects of that as an adults, where it's like we need to have discussions. We need to talk out our feelings. We kind of suppress these things. And now it's kind of like, I don't know which way I'm supposed to feel, or this way or this way. So I'm all about raising the human. He's going to be a kid for a blip, but he's going to be a human and an adult for the rest of his life. And so I'm trying to teach him right now. I say things to him right now is like, hey, man, I need to, um, if you do this, then I can do this for you because you'll prove to me that this is really important to you. Your dad did the same thing with you, Austin. It's like, if the consequence is worth the action, go for it. But you will pay the consequence. I love that. That's the way that we parents like, dude, if you want to do that, totally fine. That means that this. And when that thing happens and he goes, no, I don't want that. I was like, I have to be a man of my word. I have to be a man of my word. And I want you to be a man of your word. And so when he does stuff and he goes, I was a man of my word. I'm like, you understand that from, from a, a literal syntax standpoint right now. But there is a seed of the conceit and the seed of the concept that has taken root. And I want that shit to grow. So that's, that's all that I care about right now. Fuck, I love him. He's so fucking rad. Kid is awesome. <laughs> it's the best. I didn't want to be a dad. Didn't want to be a parent. Had no desire. I was out. Nope. The second that Pam said we're pregnant, I was like, try to take that kid from me. And every dude, th these last her who walk, said you that or question. you, just to be clear. No, I told her we're pregnant. It was weird. She was like, <laughs> yeah. "What?" I was like, "You're pregnant." You just had a sense. You just had a feeling. Right? I just, <laughs> I just like, knew the, these things. <laughs> the midi chlorians. Uh, uh, there was something. Yeah, different the that, force yeah. is strong yeah. with you. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll go off. I, I I will I will easily rant and rave because uh, it's it's really I'm I'm excited for Greg and it's been very hard for me, Greg Miller. It's been very hard for me not just reach out to Greg and go learn from my mistakes. But I'm like, that's the whole point of being a dad is you've got to learn. Is like. Learn and and if Inflicting Greg ever mistakes wants to know on your anything, child, just to be clear, that is the yeah, point of being a dad. <laughs> that is the point of being a dad, making mistakes. <laughs> this is why I guess I'm grateful that I'm the younger sibling. Uh, is that uh, I guess the trial run happened in the older sibling. Road tested, then, yeah. Road tested. Yeah. I would be, I would really be really curious to see. Like my my parent, uh, my sister and I is growing up was very very different, and and we still unpack the stuff age where difference it's like again. Two and a half years, so not too dissimilar. Oh, see, we're five. I thought it was like three or four, so five years different. What about you, Mike? Five. Uh, to my my little sister, yeah, it's uh, three, four years, yeah. I thought you're the youngest. I'm the oldest. You're the so oldest. I got three little sisters, yeah. All right. You think they'd stop after you? No, One they had done. no idea. They had no <laughs> idea how bad it was going to get. No, it was fine. Uh, I have a friend. Uh, this is this is this is the the thinnest of tangents, but I have a friend who is in his mid thirties who met his birth parent, his birth mother for the first time mm. uh, this week. He, he grew up adopted and, mm. uh, and thanks to what's it like, what's it called? One of the like ancestry.com 23, 23 and me. It was that one. Yeah. He oh, was able to, really? Not what, really? He like just like the, the, did the thing and it said, it's a your whole, is, it's a whole, by the way, you're 2% crazy... Mongolian and here's your birth mother. <laughs> That's amazing. Kind Isn't of. Yeah. He, he tried it years ago and he was starting to feel that, um, he was starting to feel this sort of down, like she's, you know, based on a pro like based on what little information he knew, he was like, I don't know how much longer it would be reasonable to just assume fairly she's alive. And mm -hmm. so he was starting to feel like he was running out of time. So he did it again without thinking mm -hmm. about the idea that the database would have grown considerably um, since he did it last. And it led to this whole crazy story of discovering that he has a half brother where the half brother mm -hmm. was raised as like this total cliche New York Italian. Uh, and uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, Austin. Troy, could you quickly do that voice for us? Yeah. Total cliche New York Italian. My name is going to be... It's about the best symbols and some stuff. I can't believe it. I gotta grow That's up. That's the in a elder place of the family. I was. I was. You gotta go down to Saudis. No, I'm only 26 years old. That's the thing. <laughs> go down to Saudis and make a good sandwich for you. It's amazing. I, I was it's definitely amazing. hearing m far more of like a De Niro, but but uh, this is definitely the, the <laughs> grandfather it, of the organ. Now it's De Niro. Now it's getting the De Niro head nod. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
Like he's fighting an infection. Draw or it something. again. It's a simple diagram. Draw it again. Yeah, that is. What's so it called? The boathouse in Hereford. Apparently, this guy. So he was just like it was drilled <clears throat> into you, him massively as a kid because it mm. turned out that um, that uh, the it was like it, it's this whole. I'm forgetting the story, but it was this whole crazy like uh, kid born uh, like basically con- I think conceived at Woodstock t- with like a, a Vietnam oh. vet on shore leave and like. And it was, everything was insane. And this guy, mm-hmm. and there was all this shame uh, that the family was trying to hide. So it was like, you're Italian. You're definitely Italian. And like growing up and, and, and then, uh, then the guy grows up and he's got the slick back hair and he's like a salesman now and all this stuff. And then his, you know, Italian. now his, now he's like, his two, yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, no, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, he hams up the identity as part of the act, as it were. And I've seen Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. Yeah. I know what it's supposed to be. 100%. So then apparently what happened is the guy goes and uh, has now got uh, like teenage daughters who want to try 23andMe. And that comes back that they're like nearly pure German. And he's like, that's impossible. He, he does it on himself, German. And he's like, what the hell? And he goes to like a family reunion and goes... Who here knows if I'm adopted? 20 people in the room all looked down at the floor in shame. All of them oh, knew and kept the secret. Shame. Kept the secret so for 50 years. He didn't know. Yeah, he did not know. Oh he had no idea. So he's like, you all have some ant- some questions to answer. Finally finds out that this woman had basically had sex with a random guy at Woodstock, given up the kid to an Italian family that, that was having a hard time uh, having a kid of their own and was like sure. feeling this social pressure. Uh, and so he, uh, he discovers through the process that he has a mysterious half brother. So meanwhile, my friend who is that half brother is going through his own version, finds this guy on Facebook messages him and goes, it's about time. I've been looking for you for a while. And then, he gets to he gets to meet his uh, he gets to meet his brother. He's literally in New York meeting her this weekend. And the crazy thing is, the beautiful part of the story, he wrote her an email and he read it to me, and it was hilarious because it was like, "Hey, Ma, it's I been can't a while. believe you got knocked up in Woodstock. <laughs> now no. I'm a German. I didn't even understand it. What am I gonna I'll do?" I'll be the same. I no, can't no, not that it. guy. Not I that guy. I got a sauerkraut and some stuff now. <laughs> My 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 friend Ma. sent. <laughs> what the hell just happened? Why I, I'm still recording. I did we? a terrible New York accent. Yeah, there is. It, it broke the recording. Well, no, yeah. I just got a weird error. What okay, the? good. We're all good. Um, yeah. So my friend sends this message. It was really sweet though because it was like he had no idea what to say. To like, what do you say to someone that? I that, that that don't gave know you what up? to say. I'm going right, to be my it. mother. <laughs> I gotta, to go, to the, Disney I gotta Plus. go to the city to find my this mother. September. It's a good story, man. That's a good I was gonna say, I, I'm, a, I'm on board. Like, you sold me on the pitch. Uh, I, I'm the trying to in it. Yeah. I'm gonna be this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna play this is the trick. <laughs> I'm gonna play gonna be the, the son brother. and the mother. <laughs> Gunter Spignali. That's the name of the character. That's the good. family guy bit. You captured me perfectly, Jimmy. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do a scene with myself. I'm going to be the mother, and I'm going to be the son. <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. I'm, oh, God. Now I'm doing Pacino for no reason. <gasps> Have oh. I ever told you my Pacino story? No, but I want to hear it right now. I was, I was in oh, L.A. Oh, my. Going to tell a story about Al Pacino. Go ahead. I care what so I was in L.A. I was, was doing, uh, doing, doing John Wick, and there's a vegan restaurant. which this I is a recent Al Pacino the, story. In case it's a place the guy loves. In New York. In, a vegan, in L.A. Oh, I was in no. LA. It's an amazing vegan restaurant uh, that I've been to a few times now. And me and me and my producer Ben, uh, who you both know, we're kind of sat ben. just enjoying dinner. And Ben's lovely; he's great. Um, we were enjoying dinner, <clears throat> and I notice about, and I've got my back to the room. I notice about, like you know, at the at the starter stage, Ben's face is just frozen, like in like awe. He has to reset like, his camera. So of course I do the immediate thing. I do the immediate yeah, exactly. So, I do the immediate thing where I very obviously turn around and look, right? <laughs> and yeah, the table behind us, 
is um, is Al Pacino and like going, family and friends. What are the specials tonight? Well, he's, well, he's talking like very quietly. Video. He's clearly trying to keep a low profile. But Ben, you know, Ben's a massive movie fan. He's he's overwhelmed by it. I'm 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 equally like yeah, obviously super amazed by it. And we eat dinner and we're enjoying it. And it becomes apparent as the evening goes on. You know, Mr. Pacino and his family are enjoying a birthday celebration for him. And they, you know, oh, friends and family and like, and it's, it's, it's clearly, it's not a Hollywood party. It's just like, you know, 15 people around the table enjoying a nice meal together. And there's little speeches, but again, like very muted, trying to keep like, you know, not trying to draw the room in. And, uh. Just what I think that's another birthday. Hey, drag me back in. It's lovely. It's a, it's just, it's a nice, nice little family get together. And obviously everyone's being very respectful in that way that obviously everyone in LA is and New York and London are very, we're all very good at noticing the celebrity, being excited about it. And then, you know, moving on with our day. But then, um, but Ben can't stop like looking. And to be honest, I'm looking a little bit as well. Cause it's, it's fucking Al Pacino. You know, that's amazing. Um, and it goes, it goes on. Fucking. And he is like a, it's, it's, it was like a ritual. Like it's 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 very, I would yeah. watch that. To be honest eyes, with you, I'd be like eyes wide shut themed birthday party. But end of the meal, and I'm not making this up, and it's and it's ensured that I will forever love and respect Al Pacino. End of the meal, and it's his birthday. I think we looked it up on the cab ride home. Like it was his birthday. He was like he was. He's definitely like in. He's like in his late seventies, early eighties. Seventy eight. He's eighty one now. So. Eighty one. Eighty one now. I just looked it so up because I remember been, thinking so he would have been was... about 79, 80 over this one. And he and, and he stands up, gets up very carefully at the end of the meal, um, with like you know I, I assume like you know a daughter or a granddaughter kind of giggling at the table because she's clearly seen this happen before. And he says, and I can't do an impression, so I won't try. But I'll let Troy do it after. He says, "I've noticed you all have seen me in the room, and I just want to give you a gift to celebrate my birthday." Hoo ha! Uh. <laughs> and then sits down, and uh, I just I, was uh, like. I thought he was going to go, Tracy, play. Tracy, Tracy. <laughs> and he just, he did. He belted hoo-ha. The entire, obviously the entire room sings happy birthday to him. And it was it was lovely. It was very sweet. Was very there sweet. Was, That's a, a friend of mine was, uh, was a, I think at that point he was probably a PA for, the, remember the movie, the, the second movie that Pacino and, and De Niro did, Not Heat. Um, Righteous like, Kill? We just, we just needed one. What was it called? Righteous Kill. Sure. It was like, we just needed heat and we didn't need, the other one we need a michael man mm-hmm. to do his and then be done sure. um but he said they were shooting in in new york and so it was you know transpo would be taking them to set or whatever and de niro always goes he's like has his personal who's been with him like for forever and de niro is super demure stays very quiet but chino is like i want the he likes the attention he likes you know, hmm. so he gets out. He's like, I'm going to walk. So he gets out of the van and walks in the middle of Manhattan, like Midtown to set. And of course, it's just and sure. pff, PAs are going shit. <laughs> I was trying to keep this guy safe, get him to set. But it was kind of like it's probably That's done that does. a million times. Yeah, it's the difference between, you know, the two of them. And I don't fault either one. One one guy, mm-hmm. you know, De Niro is apparently very quiet, very private. Uh, and Pacino's like, look, it is, it is, just a, he is just a fascinating, iconic, he's incredible. Like bo- both, both mm-hmm. of them in their own right are, 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 and you watch, it's almost like Mickey Rourke. When you watch nine and a half weeks with Mickey Rourke, there's no way that that's the same guy from the wrestler. There's just no mm-hmm. way that that. I, I was talking to Pam about this. I was like, he was a teen heartthrob. Not teen, but he was like, you know, the age. She's like, how is he? I was like, look at him. And then he decided to go be a boxer for a second. And <laughs> yeah. then that messed up his face. And he's he's actually this brilliant actor. Mm-hmm. That always just kind of gets cast in these weird things. But, but like, you look at Pacino right out of the gate, man. I mean, Godfather, Dog Day Afternoon, Serpico. It's insane what he was able to do. In just a short amount of time, it's like, my God. What's the other one? Uh, I'm missing one of the big ones. A Gina, Pacino? Godfather, you said. Well, you didn't God... say, you didn't say, oh, early, you mean? Early yeah. one? Devil's Advocate with Keanu Reeves. Um, <laughs> I was going to say. He's an that on. Dunkin' Donuts commercial. I'm not that, Kevin. I was going to say, um, Son of a Woman, that's... since you went there with it, but that's definitely not But early. that's 80s. I'm yeah. talking like 70s, just right out of the gate. It was Godfather, Dog Day Afternoon, Serpico, and there's one more that I'm forgetting. 
Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Serpico is the beard. Scarface. He's Scarface. Scarface. There we go. That's eighty though, right? Nineteen eighty. Actually, you're right. Eighty three. Eighty three. He was so, in a I movie mean, called Me, Natalie, in 1969. He played Natalie. <laughs> yeah. He played and Tony. Me. It was uh, two roles, yeah. It, it, was, it was crazy. Um, Here's a movie I don't know anything about that he did apparently what's right after The Godfather. Scarecrow. Do you know anything about this film? It's no. like Joker, right? But <laughs> With Gene Hackman. The Hackman. What? That Dude, must Gene not Hackman. be a good film. Right? You know what? Funny, he's got those I, two in it, and we've not heard of it. That's he, that's not a good film. Gene Hackman, yeah, exactly. Best must, must not have aged well. Uh, you, so your your story, your your restaurant story, reminds me of a funny experience once, not that long ago. Actually, it was would have been just I think a little bit before COVID, where um um. The, Parenting I, of Pacino, at, by the way, this is what this. I'm already feeling. This is what it's going to be titled. It's going to be called. Pacino. It's going to be called. Where the hell is Alana? Um, the. Yeah. Um, I'm so worried about her. I'll be honest. We'll see. I check. We'll yeah, see. she sent a message that she was like, "I don't know what's going to happen." My 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 pitch was that she show up at the last five seconds and intro the show and then be out. But uh, a lot well, we've all, other than you, Austin, we've now all missed an episode right i'm the i'm the i'm You're the, the one i'm the commander wharf of this operation uh <laughs> yeah, i was gonna i was trying to think which next gen wait, character wait, wait, to wait, call wait. you then who am i i'm definitely tasha y'all please so, tell me i'm Riker. <laughs> you i'm know. handsome but also just a little no, bit austin's off. possibly also Riker because of the <gasps> beard growth midway through the show that's um i don't mind that i will i will i will change how thing. i sit in chairs from now on who would do I you know be? why he does that do you know why he does that? The he coming over massive, the chair because he's huge. He's six four, six five. He has he has he has a, a massive back injury, I and now when that. you watch Next Generation, you'll notice every single scene he's leaning on something, he's propped up on something. Like he's always really? having to kind of adjust. He, it's really uncomfortable for Jonathan Frakes to like stand up for long periods of time. I did not know that. So Do you, you know, you'll now in every he's that's why he's always got his foot up on a chair. He's always like doing something. It what felt like weird 80s power plays are just a guy, you know, doing dealing his with job an injury. Trying yeah, no exactly idea. dealing with the injury. I adore yeah, that so. guy so much and it is one mm. of my bucket list items to be able to sit cuz he directed a couple of the Star Trek movies that Goldsmith scored. Mm. And it is it is so my I've never had the chance to pick the brain of a director who directed Goldsmith. I've always mm. wanted to do that. Mm. And he's one of those guys that it ticks multiple boxes at once to be able to have that chat with him. If you ever get the opportunity to meet Frakes, you have to tell me like 24 hours. I will be on the plane. I, like, here I, was, I, would, I admire the hell out of his here, Did uh, I related, tell you my story with Frakes? Wait, wait, wait. Tell it in one second. Because I related. I did. A restaurant. I never. I never. Um. I saw Brent Spiner in a diner once, which brings me great joy because it rhymes. Um, that's genuinely <laughs> I, uh, true. He did. I, uh, like they might be giant lyrics. Was that saw Brent um, Spiner <laughs> in a diner and it brings me so much joy? Go ahead. The the remember uh, the Reading Rainbow Kickstarter. It was like massive record breaking. Mm -hmm. I threw a stack of money at it as a as a simultaneous fan of Reading Rainbow and Lavar Burton. It's very and disrespectful, I, just like. Yeah, yeah, I was like, well, I, I, yeah, I was Make one of those. It rain, bitch. <laughs> I wanted that to exist, you know? And so normally when I give to Kickstarters, after the first time when you realize how much spam you're going to get as a result, you, you you tend to just, at least for me, I just give with no reward because it's usually a friend of mm -hmm. mine at this point where I'm like, I'm happy to support you. Yeah. I don't want your shit, though. And also as someone who has <laughs> put on Kickstarters, it really helps your margins to like have a few of these Re the like a few of these people not being, yeah. yeah exactly people not like uh, using your bandwidth as much as like it it, it helps uh with yeah. your fulfillment bandwidth so but this was one of those instances where it was like for 500 bucks you can have a phone call with lavar burton and i was like no. i think i have to do it so i i, I almost if I'd didn't know about that i would have done it so so sure enough so sure enough i was scheduled for like here's your 10 minute window on this time and you better not miss it because we because they had over a hundred thousand backers like they they, sure. they they broke the record for most number of people to back a single campaign so he had to God, make like fifty thousand phone calls or something insane <sighs> yeah. but don't take you don't have to take my word for it <laughs> okay hey thank you but you don't yeah. take my word for it <laughs> okay thank you yeah but exactly you don't take my word. <laughs> no so he goes so he so we get on the phone and I was like, 
Look, man, I just, I want you to know that, yes, I, your body of work is astounding. You're, you, I have tremendous admiration, but where I'm coming from is that I'm a composer and anyone who has ever had the opportunity to be in something that was set to music by the great master, Jerry Goldsmith, is just a chance I, I can never, I can never miss. And I just think that's so special. He's my all my all time hero. And I said, funny enough, I even have a portrait of him on my wall. And without skipping a beat, LeVar Burton goes, in your portrait, does he have the ponytail or not? And I was like, fuck, the fact that you would even know to ask that question <laughs> brings me so much happiness right now. And he was mm. like, I can honestly say no one has brought up Jerry Goldsmith in these calls. And he, 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 had, he had so <laughs> much Your level of nerd though. is something I've yet to encounter in this reality. Yeah. It was so cool though to hear his his respect for him though. It was it was uh, it was awesome. Okay, Troy, what was yours? Oh, dude, Frakes was Frakes awesome. Story. We did we did Young Justice together, and uh, he was in the room. and And I've I've met everybody from the deck of the Enterprise, with the exception of both uh, Patrick Dewan, DeForest Kelly, and uh, Patrick Stewart. Is the, that's the the hat James trick. Dewan, you mean? Yeah, James Dewan. Save us twenty comments. Yeah, it's sorry, just, sorry, just, sorry, sorry. Jump in there, right? You're fine. You're fine. James Dewan, yeah, Patrick. Dewan. So, so Patrick Stewart, James Dewan, and, and DeForest Kelly. DeForest Kelly. Well, you, well, those are going so to be tough gonna guests. We be one of those now, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, I, the, left, yeah. I wasn't able to be, you know, two, DeForest Kelly died like in the seventies, I think. Yeah, like well, no, no, right. no, no. He, he was the, in movies he did, he did up until oh yeah, of yeah. course he was. And then he, he was in, but then I think only a couple of years later he passed. He died 90s. after three, right? No, because he was in four. Isn't he in the pilot of Star no, he's Trek? He's in the next pilot generation? of Next Gen. Yeah, he's in. Yeah. He's in Far Point. Um, this is this. We have been on a journey on this wow. call. I love it. Um, oh, so there yeah, we go. No, There's our third one. Soon after that. And then um, Dewan was in also in Next Gen actually, and then passed again quite soon. After his his. Next Gen episode maybe. is one of the best of that show. The scene oh, where beautiful. they share a drink on the holodeck of the original Enterprise. Well, my favorite line is he says, you know, by every measure, your Enterprise is superior to mine. But with mine, I could tell how fast we were going by the vibration of the deck plates. And I thought that what a beautiful line, little yeah. moment that is. And I love you know, they had to use ugh. a fan's rebuild of that set for that scene. That's, I, that's like a that's like a fan built set that they use oh. for that scene. It's lovely. That's fun. I didn't. Anyway, I, I didn't remember your Frank that. story, Troy. We oh, I just, you off. I, I yeah. just went to Galaxy Quest. It's like they built a set. Um, <laughs> Galaxy Quest is a great one. Uh, so anyway, uh, he walks in, and 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 we're kind of taking a break or whatever. And I was like, "Hey, man, um, great work so far." I, I, I'm, I'm Troy. He's like, "Ah, oh, nice speech." I was like, "I'm sorry, sorry to do this to you." And he's like, "Here it comes," <laughs> you know. And I was like, "I, I fucking loved you in Gargoyles." And he goes, "Xanatos." And he was just <laughs> down to talk about it. He's like, why do you think I'm here today? He was like, these guys keep hiring me. And because, of course, of course, you know, the same people that did um, uh, Gargoyles did Young Justice. And for uh, someone, you, it's the same thing. It's like, I, I don't expect you to know the, the thing that I love you for. This thing is great and that thing is great. But it's like really this thing that I really. It's like you I and would, Kai Lang. You're an asshole. Your hey. joke was better though. I was gonna do like Bruce Kyle Willis in the launching the of launching on Monday, right? Yeah, it's the Mass Effect. Away. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to finish all my work for the year uh, by Monday, I guess, so that I can. Uh, <laughs> I've got the. Week are off, you? But, is there a yeah. part of you that that doesn't want to just needs to stay here, or are you really like let's fucking go, let's let's. I won't play it. I won't. I genuinely won't be playing it just for that reason because I, I I think Mass Effect's probably better in my memory than if I were to go back to it now. I think that's true yeah. of a lot of things, though, right? I don't think that's Man. the case for me because I've replayed them so many times that I oh, that I have, I have up to date. Oh yeah, I think I've done okay. four runs through that trilogy. There's hmm. it's, it's got to be. I I wasn't when I got my first shot. I, I was I was like mm, I don't feel or the second day after I was kind of like feeling weird and so I broke out my my little emulator that has my. Uh, like 5,000 games on it or whatever. And so I, I was like, what do I feel like playing for, for some reason? I guess I had like a, a sick day and, and I, I got to play Nintendo. And so that just like brings me back to kind of how I felt. And so I didn't, I didn't want to play anything. And Traveler was like sitting right next to me. So I couldn't go in my room and like fire the PS5 or whatever. It was, uh, and so we we're just sitting on the couch and I was like, I'm going to play this. And he was like, I want to see. And so I fired up Crystalis. I was like, this is a game that no matter what, I'll, I'll play it right now. It's like, it's a weird one, but it's it's like the first. I don't know. It's like I, I have this. I have this weird. It's not the first game that I ever played by far, but it's it's definitely one that just like I don't know. It's it's one of my go tos. But there are very few games that I've I will pl replay multiple times. 
Um, that's why I do like games that have replayability, but not necessarily I want to go back through and play the campaign. It's just stuff that I right. want to go back in and drop into it's the like world It's like continued again. play rather than replay, right? You want yeah. to keep going I'm, back Look, and, you know, yo, I, I am the 100% like, not episodic necessarily, but as far as like, you know, open world FTP, like that, I'm, I'm, I'm that candidate. Like give me stuff that I can just kind of continually drop in and, and buy new worlds, buy new gadgets and shit. That's... I'm I'm your I'm your sucker 100. Yeah, percent That's why I avoid those. Like I remember, yeah, uh, basically exactly the same. Yeah, EverQuest EverQuest uh, was a was an enlightening experience for me as a young man because I realized my predilection for genuine like non functional addiction to this is legit. Like I I will rearrange my schedule in order to maximize my time in this world. And so by the time I broke free of it was right about the time that world of Warcraft was coming out. And I was oh, like, thank God there before the grace of God goes Austin, that beer would have been real long. <laughs> oh, for sure. I don't, I don't like to finish things. I don't like, see, I things. do. And if they have no ending, then I'm oh, trapped perfect. for eternity. I'm like, I'm like Dr. Yeah. Strange in the Dormammu loop. Like I, I, I just can't get out. That's that. I, I want that. I, I don't, Seeing credits necessarily doesn't, it's like, that's it. I'll never have that again. So to me, to be able to perpetually stay in there is... Uh, Isn't that beautiful, it took me though? A, look, I... I mean, you're the I, king I, of, like, <gasps> recognizing... We're going to talk about death again. Yay. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. You're, it's you're, what you're, makes you life beautiful is that it has an end. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I remember I when Journey, the, what happens when Journey starts mm. to roll credits is before it says a single credit name, it says, thank you for playing. And I remember getting tweets from people saying, I don't remember ever being thanked by the game before. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and it was like that to me. I, I don't know if they, I, I surely they didn't do that for the first time, but just that idea of like, and now we move on. I, I don't know. To me, that's actually vastly more um, uh, appealing than it being more like the, the bar you go to every Friday to hang out with your friends or something, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's like that feeling of, I remember a, a good, a good comparison might be, I remember um, finishing reading return of the King on a plane. And mm. it was a very powerful experience to just close that lat, close the back cover and then just look out the window at fucking middle earth. It felt like, it felt like that's what I've it looked like from that perspective. It was such a moving experience to say goodbye you know, it's like they're literally sailing off to the, you know, into the West uh, to uh, what the hell is it called? I'm blanking. My nerd cred is shattering before us. Um, Westeros. Come on. I started to say Valinor. It's not, it's not it. Um, Tatooine. Tatooine. Oh, Sorry. My bad. Apologies. This is all going to have to get cut for the sake <laughs> just, of our I reputation. I just want to fuck with them. <laughs> I honestly can't remember. Uh, I've, I've had that situation literally on the, on the plane before, too, is either finishing a show because yeah, I, I just would plow through whatever show, and and it's like, okay, that was it. I did uh, man, uh, man in the high castle. I finished. I was like, okay, that one. I was like, I'm glad to be done with it. This needed to end, you know, where it where it did. It was great. And I was like a little long in the tooth. Um, I never understood that show because I've not I've not watched. It. I've read the book. The book ends at a point where I think Valinor they, they, they got to in the first three or they, four episodes. Yeah, they kept the extrapolating. Show, right? they kept it going. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just so we're all to. clear, Valinor. Yeah. No, no, no. It I was just... Valinor. Um, what did I say? What... I don't know. Valheim. Valheim? <laughs> nice. I got a anyway, buddy that's still playing that. He's going hard. Like, they, they dig it I don't into know. It. Wait, wait. Don't ruin it. We almost went the whole show without talking about video games. <laughs> I wasn't talking. I was talking about, no, he goes and plays need... a Valheim football team. Ah, good. And it's nice. The, the, it's the Icelandic football team. They, they don't play, play with a football. They, they play, play with real ice. hard. <laughs> yeah, was they play with stones. <laughs> This is a snowball. It gets bigger as the game goes on, which yes. makes it more and more challenging. Yeah. But they can only play in the winter, and then it's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like just w yeah. wet. Um, <laughs> why don't Austin, since you're our host, why don't you do the honors? It feels so wrong. I I I, I was giving Alana this like, oh, yeah. you have your shot. Sh I guess she's gonna record an intro, so we we can just we can just say nothing. My hope is that right. she does. No, it. that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. We, she, she should. She'll do her own intro, but you should also do one. You've, you've stepped in. Yeah, you've shepherded you've this. All right, you've, all right, you've run, fair enough. You've shepherded this entire situation. This is an honor that you deserve to enjoy. Well, are you ready? Well, we're gonna. This is a coup. We, now. we, we, we take, won't interrupt you though. That's the take important one. thing. Like, well, yeah, take, uh, take the, the time. The, 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 
that I'll never be able to master the Alana like, like looking at the like the <laughs> that's right the gym, you know John Krasinski thing that she does whenever we misbehave. The um, reference. Oh, brutal! All right, well in that case, hello. This is Play Watch Listen. I'm sorry, sorry, Austin. One more Austin time. Hi everybody. Motherfucker. Sorry, just one hi, more time. Everybody. Whatever you're hi, yeah. just, just, hi everybody. Just just just. It's not a problem. Just we just want to get it for coverage. We'll probably not use it. We'll we'll go with your ad lib. That's that was that, very funny. But can we wait? We'll just it's try it it's on mirrored script, on mine. That is Mike Bithell. That yeah. is Troy Baker. That <laughs> is Austin Wintery. There were no job <laughs> titles this time. <laughs> Troy, you're just you're just like having severe having like trying to break out the side of the yeah yeah your neural pathways are not firing correctly. Yeah. Uh, see you later. Somewhere is Alana. Yeah, <laughs> Alana doesn't exist. <laughs> the mystery continues. Magic, and that's that. Oh wait, one more thing.